This video will demonstrate several ways in which teachers can use Google Apps to support their curricular work. Um, I will first talk about using spreadsheets to get large sample sizes worth of data if you're doing a science lab. Uh, and I will also talk about uh, using Google Apps to create shared lab reports and setting up um, spreadsheets for rubrics to grade those lab reports. And then finally, I will talk about ways in which you can efficiently organize uh, those shared documents as your um, students um, share them with you. Now, um, in my science class, in my biology class, we do a number of labs where we uh, aggregate the data from all the uh, lab teams from all of my classes into a single large spreadsheet. Uh, before I started using Google Apps, I would have this spreadsheet loaded on a single computer in the room, and at the end of the, the class time, uh, I would have all the lab teams line up to enter their data in a spreadsheet one by one. Uh, this took a lot, of, a lot of valuable class time and was not a very efficient way of getting all that data. I did want a lot of data for a number of labs where um, you, you only start to see the expected results uh, when you aggregate the data. And so uh, I eventually, when I found Google Apps, created a spreadsheet, and then I would share that spreadsheet with all of the students, and they could enter the data for their lab team on their own time, whether it was from the school library or at home or whenever. Uh, they had all had access to the spreadsheet and uh, they could access it from any computer um, anywhere. And so this is a look at the data that we gathered from uh, a Mendelian inheritance lab. And you can see there is a lot of data there and you really only get to see the expected Mendelian inheritance ratios when you total them up at the very bottom of the spreadsheet. And so that's, that's really useful for aggregating your data. Now, another thing that I use Google Apps for is I have um, student lab teams um, do a shared lab report in a Google document. One of the benefits of doing a lab report, a group lab report with Google Apps is that um, the one document that's created by one of the lab team members is then shared with all the other lab members and they all have access to it from whatever computer they can log onto the internet and log into their Gmail account with. Um, and they don't have to worry about who's working with the latest version. The, the document is located on Google server and it's always the latest version. Now, uh, another uh, advantage to using Google Apps for shared group work is um, having to do with um, who's doing the work in the group work. Um, initially, when I went from um, having my students doing individual lab reports to uh, group lab reports, I was kind of reluctant because I knew that some students would probably let other students do the work for them. Um, I tried to uh, eliminate that possibility or at least encourage students to do work on the lab report because I would also give a lab quiz to kind of figure out who's doing work on the lab report or to encourage students to participate in the lab report so they could do well on the lab quiz. But I still suspected some students weren't doing the work uh, until I started using um, Google Apps. And now with Google Apps, I can actually check and see who's doing the work on the lab report. If I go to the file menu, go down to see revision history, it will give me a, a kind of basic review of the revision history and who did work on the lab report. And then if I click this button, it will show more detailed um, revision history and show exactly who did what work when. And you can actually click on this version to see what the lab report looked at, looked like at that particular time. And you can see that um, for the individual students, they are kind of color-coded um, with different colors here, which makes it kind of um, easy to um, see um, who's doing what work when. Um, unfortunately, when you look in a revision history, the work that a student does isn't color-coded as well. That would be a, a really nice addition. Um, these 
um, these colored um, text areas here, those are comments that I pasted in when I graded this particular lab report. Now, uh, when I'm grading a lab report, um, I have a Google document for that lab report that has comments uh, that I just copy and paste um, to um, the, the student um, documents. So um, I'll just select a comment here and then I can uh, scroll down to where I want to paste it and uh, paste it into their lab report. Um, oops, it's not pasting. Um, let me just try it again. There it is. Um, now, uh, in addition to having uh, what I call a comment palette that have uh, that has uh, a stored uh, selection of comments for this particular lab, I also have a uh, a grading rubric, um, and this is the grading rubric for this particular lab. So that when I'm grading a student lab report, um, the first thing I do is go to the template sheet and create a duplicate of it. And then I rename that duplicate, and I'm going to call this um, 3R for the name of the lab group. And then I can just put my totals in this spreadsheet as I'm reading the lab report. And because it's a spreadsheet and set up to automatically total the points for each item that I'm looking for in the lab report, uh, all of that addition work is is done for me when I get at the down to the bottom of the grade report and then after I've graded um, all the lab reports for all of my classes then I share this spreadsheet with all the students so they can just click on their lab groups uh, number and letter and find the grade for um, their particular lab report um, now there's one, um, one difficulty um, that's kind of problematic for um, uh, having students doing group lab reports with Google Docs and then sharing them with you. Uh, when they share a document with you or when they share a document with each other, there's an option to also include an email with a link to that document. And I, I encourage my students to do that um, so that their lab partners can get that email and have a quick and easy link to the document, uh, although it will actually show up in their documents interface over here with documents shared with me. Um, but uh, it also shows up in their email here, and it also shows up in my email, and so it clutters my inbox in my email. To deal with that, I create a filter. Um, with a filter, I can filter all the incoming emails having to do with shared lab reports to a, a folder, and um, um, I can bypass the inbox. And the way that I would do that, um, because all of the emails have the keyword shared, I'm going to use shared as my filtering keyword. And then I'm going to click next step. And the first thing I want to do so it doesn't show up, so this, the, those emails and any future emails don't show up on my inbox, I'm going to choose skip, skip the inbox. And then I'm going to apply a label and I'm going to make a new label. I'm going to call this lab reports. I don't necessarily need to, um, need to put them in a label. I can just delete them. But um, just in case I can't find a team's lab report, I can always check my email for the link to it. So... Uh, I'm just going to keep it around in, in its own kind of folder or label. Um, and I'm going to click OK. And since I want to also send all of the ones that I've already see, received to that, that filter, I'm going to click also apply to the 41 conversations below, which have those keywords. And I'm going to click create filter. And I'm going to go back to my inbox and they are no longer there. They're gone. Um, now, um, the way that I get to um, documents that are shared to me without clicking and, and opening up every email and then clicking on the link that's enclosed in the email, I just go to uh, my documents interface and click on documents that are shared with me. And let me just sort by date. Um, and then for all the new incoming lab reports, I will select them 
select all of them and then I've created a folder here for those lab reports. This happens to be the Crosses lab and I'll just click and drag all of those selected lab reports to that folder and so whenever I want to find them, just those lab reports for the Crosses lab, I click on the Crosses lab and they're all there. Okay, uh, that's um, that sums it up for um, some ways you can use Google Apps in education.